The doomsday plane spotted over Denver last week. The Secret Service loses tons of its guns and mysteries surrounding the opening of Christ's tomb. It's Wednesday, November 23rd, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, I'd like to repeat of a nightmare, a magnitude 7.4 earthquake off the coast of Fukushima, Japan, early Tuesday morning local time. It was Monday afternoon, central U.S. time. Japanese government issued a tsunami warning immediately ordered evacuation of the coastline around Fukushima. They estimated the height of the incoming wave at about 10 feet. The actual waves that hit the coast were thankfully much smaller. There was a report during the uh, warnings that the cooling system for reactor number three at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant had gone offline. Apparently that was a false reading caused by water in the cooling tank sloshing around after the quake and fooling a sensor. Tokyo Electric Power said there were no irregularities or changes in radiation at the plant during the incident. Of course, they've been entirely truthful for the last five years about everything else there. The plant, of course, heavily damaged by the massive earthquake in 2011. The U.S. military has pulled its troops from a Turkish-backed operation near Aleppo in Syria. This was called Operation Noble Lance. We had special operations troops deployed with Turkey's Operation Euphrates Shield. These are rebels backed by Turkey's military. They rolled over the site of what was supposed to be the climactic final battle between the Islamic State and the forces of Rome without much resistance. Uh, Dabak, the name of that small village, um, the Islamic State then has said, well, this wasn't really the last battle. It'll happen there, but later. Uh, the goal is the strategically situated town of Al-Bab, which means the gate. So why has the United States military decided to pull its special operators out of this advancing force? Because it appears that the Syrian Democratic Forces, backed by the Turks, might encounter the Kurdish YPG militia, allies of the United States in the fight against the Islamic State. And if the shooting starts, apparently we don't want our guys, well, obviously, we don't want our guys shooting at our own allies. The other thing to remember is that al-Bab is not that far from Aleppo, and if these Syrian Democratic forces get too close, the Russians, who have troops in and near Aleppo, might start shooting at these guys as well. Last Wednesday, people in Denver noted a plane at high altitude, about 32,000 feet, circling over the Denver metro area. People started calling local media, and Channel 7 there in Denver began tracking a flight called Iron 99. They checked with the Air Force bases in the area. None of them knew anything about it, although public information officers suggested that the racetrack-like pattern indicated that it probably was a military plane. After circling Denver for hours, apparently spraying something. Uh, the mystery plane veered off to the southeast, headed for Oklahoma. Well, the mystery was solved a day later. The plane was, in fact, an E-6B Mercury. This is confirmed by the U.S. Navy. It operates these planes. The plane called the Doomsday Plane because it's intended to be operated during a massive nuclear attack. The uh, E-6B can launch nuclear missiles and communicate with nuclear submarines. But of course, the question is why, if it was just returning to base, which is what the Navy said, did it spend several hours in the air circling over Denver? And if you're not familiar with the Denver airport as a possible part of this story, you really need to do a little searching online. We could spend an entire, well, several hours on the Denver airport, at the very least, here, artwork. <laughs> um, not to mention the giant blue horse Mustang out in front of the airport with the glowing red eyes called Blucifer. That's the nickname. I don't think that's the official name, but uh, seriously, those red eyes are part of the statue. And then there's the Masonic capstone in the terminal at the uh, airport there in Denver, which uh, honors the New World Airport Commission. Again, we could do hours just on the Denver airport. Another mystery, a former worker at Britain's version of the NSA, GCHQ, it's called, has been found dead, drowned in his bathtub with the front door of his apartment unlocked. 28-year-old Thomas Blazinski had been suspended from GCHQ back in 2011 because of an unspecified incident at work. He was later reinstated. Now, after his suspension, it's reported that he began suffering anxiety and depression, something he was not prone to before. Uh, he quit GCHQ the next year, 2012. His parents found him 
face down in the tub when they went to his apartment after being unable to reach him for several weeks. Police say there was no evidence of a burglary. His wallet, mobile phones, untouched. Coroner said there was no evidence that Blazinski was suicidal at this point. Still a mystery. Mysteries uh, abound today in this report. In Uzbekistan, one of the stands in Central Asia, there are rumors that the glamorous daughter of former dictator Islam Karimov has been poisoned to death. 44-year-old Gulnara Karimova has been out of the public eye since her father purged her from government in 2013. Various reports over the last three years that she's been locked in a psychiatric hospital under house arrest, living in exile in Israel. No confirmation of any of those stories. Her father had ruled Uzbekistan with an iron fist ever since it got independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. Well, Karimov died in September. Gulnara Karimova was not allowed to attend his funeral. And a spokesman for the acting president, Shavkat Mizyoyev, uh, who will probably succeed Karimov when elections are held in a couple of weeks, have, has declined to answer any questions about Karimova. Now, she's been described in diplomatic cables that were published by WikiLeaks over the last few, couple of years as the single most hated person in Uzbekistan before her fall from grace. She was educated at Harvard and, thanks to her late father's influence, was the wealthiest woman in the former Soviet Union, wealth estimated in the billions. She was also a pop music star in Uzbekistan, a catwalk model, socialite, fashion designer, foreign diplomat, the heir apparent to the Karimov dynasty, and, in her own words, an exotic Uzbekistan beauty. Well, the U.S. government is trying to return to Uzbekistan more than $600 million from a bribery scheme that she allegedly ran back in her heyday, except that government officials aren't quite sure of where the money will actually go if they send it to Uzbekistan. Switzerland is also running an investigation into a $765 million trust fund that may be hers. By my math, that's about 1.3 billion reasons for her to be on somebody's hit list. But still, her death unconfirmed <laughs> at this point. The U.S. Secret Service is trying to figure out a mystery of its own. Rather ominous when you think about these implications. Um, over the last 15 years, the Secret Service has lost thousands of sensitive assets, like firearms, laptops, badges, and even vehicles, lost or stolen. This according to documents obtained by the government watchdog group Judicial Watch. Nearly 12,000 assets lost or stolen between 2001 and 2016, including 121 weapons, which is disturbing enough, but when you think about what people might be able to do with those badges, it makes you wonder. Police trying in, in New York are trying to solve their mystery, uh, a mystery of this tracking device that was found on a city bus at a depot in Staten Island. Two maintenance workers stumbled onto this, attached to the oil pan of a bus last Wednesday. Police only said the device wasn't explosive. The Metropolitan Transportation Agency said it wasn't ours either. Sunday, over the weekend, a rather bloody day for police forces around the country. Four officers shot in three states. A 50-year-old detective, Benjamin Marconi, killed outside police headquarters in San Antonio Sunday morning. That suspect now in custody. In St. Louis, a police sergeant shot twice in the face while he sat in traffic Sunday evening. He'll be okay. He was released from the hospital Sunday or Monday, rather. The suspect in that shooting, named George P. Bush III, was shot dead in a confrontation with police later Monday. Bush had been wanted for questioning in a series of recent violent crimes, including robberies, a carjacking, and a possible killing. Officers also shot during traffic stops Sunday night in Sanibel, Florida, and Gladstone, Missouri, near Kansas City. Now, no mystery about this next story. It's just a manifestation of evil, as far as I'm concerned. A 42-year-old woman in Minneapolis is in custody after a one-year-old child was found hanging from a noose in the basement of her home daycare. A man dropping off his child Friday morning said the daycare provider wasn't acting right. Told police, she said, I did something bad. He heard a child crying, ran downstairs, found the child hanging from that noose. He cut it down, grabbed the child, grabbed his own child, and ran home. 
The woman fled the scene in a minivan, hit a pedestrian and a bicyclist. Both suffered serious injuries, but will recover. Police finally caught up with her as she tried to jump from a bridge over Interstate 94. Passersby spotted her, stopped her, and held her until police arrived. She's currently being held at the Hennepin County Medical Center and has been unresponsive since her arrest. Coming up, still another mystery. This one coming from the tomb where Jesus was laid after the crucifixion. That and more coming up on Skywatch TV. Coming exclusively from Skywatch TV for a very limited time starting December 6, 2016. When you purchase the new three book special investigative research collection, Abaddon Ascending, Final Fire, and the Shereeth Imperative from SkywatchTV.com, you'll receive the largest giveaway in Skywatch TV history. An unprecedented value of over $400 in free books, DVDs, audio files, and the never-before-released data DVD library from Dr. Michael Lake on The Shereeth Imperative, which includes 56 Christian classic works on PDF. All 28 episodes in Dr. Michael Lake's Understanding the Kingdom audio series. The latest version of Eastward for Windows. The three-part Into the Multiverse television series where Josh Peck interviews Dr. Michael Lake on the Shereeth Imperative. And nearly three hours of bonus interviews on video with Dr. Lake on the Sharpening Report. For your library or to give away as gifts. Also included in this biggest giveaway in Skywatch TV history are Josh Peck's full-length 2016 DVD presentations, The Quantum Future, and Extra Dimensional UFOs. Dr. Michael Lake's full-length 2016 DVD presentations, Jericho, The Anatomy of a Stronghold, and The Shinar Directive. The new five-part Skywatch TV special investigative report on the books, Abaddon Ascending, Final Fire, and The Shereeth Imperative. But that's that's not all. You'll also receive the new Best of Skywatch television on DVD, over five and a half hours of the most popular episodes in Skywatch TV history. You travel through the multiverse on the new Best of Into the Multiverse on DVD, over five hours of audio with Josh Peck on the coming Technocalypse, the best-selling book, The Final Roman Emperor, an incredible five-year subscription to the Skywatch magazine. Two brand new free gift books and the never before released data DVD library from Dr. Michael Lake on the Shereeth Imperative. For your library or to give away as gifts, an unprecedented value of over $400 in never before offered free products. This is the biggest giveaway in Skywatch TV history, and it's yours absolutely free when you purchase the new three-book special investigative research collection, Abaddon Ascending, Final Fire, and the Shereeth Imperative for only $39.95 plus shipping from skywatchtv.com beginning December 6, 2016. But be advised, this astonishing promotion is limited to first come, first serve while supplies last. So it's urgent that beginning December 6, 2016, you place your order for the new three book special investigative research collection. This offer is on a limited time basis and will end without notification. So be sure to visit skywatchtv.com to follow the updates. In the countdown to the biggest giveaway in Skywatch TV history, the unprecedented value of over $400 in never before offered free products while supplies last. For more details, log on to skywatchtv.com. Fascinating programs on Skywatch TV this week. The network show, Tom Horn and Josh Peck discussing the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Switzerland and what it may unlock. That's part of the uh, discussion of their new book, Abaddon Ascending, just now out from Defender Publishing. Don't miss that program for a complete list of dates and times. Watch the crawl here at the bottom of the screen or log on to skywatchtv.com slash channels. And our web exclusive this week, a program we couldn't fit into the network schedule, Dr. Michael Heiser talking about the sin of the watchers. What was it they did that was so bad that they've been locked in chains in darkness until the judgment? And why is it important for us as Christians? That's part of a preview of what he's discussing in his new book, forthcoming book, Reversing Herman, which will be out in the spring. Uh, you'll find that as a web exclusive only at skywatchtv.com and the Skywatch TV channels on Roku and on YouTube. 
Democrats seem obsessed with the idea that fake news is responsible for Donald Trump winning the White House two weeks ago. President Obama, in fact, last week said that fake news had an effect on the presidential election. Well, the Los Angeles Times very helpfully published a list of fake news websites to avoid. These sites cataloged according to whether they were false, misleading, or satirical. But some of the sites that appeared in that list were just conservative. And, uh, you know, news sites like The Blaze, uh, The Independent Journal Review, and Red State, which uh, led Red State to protest. The uh, LA Times has now pulled that story. Uh, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg said that he may use a third party to start verifying news content on Facebook to weed out fake news. Now, Zuckerberg had said in an interview that uh, the idea that fake news helped elect Donald Trump is pretty crazy. But when Facebook and Google both in the same week announced that they're going to change their ad policies to prevent fake news websites from pushing their content through Facebook and Google, then something is up. Now, I've said before, and I'll say again, the best filter that you have to weed out fake news is right there. We should not depend on the government or Google, but I repeat myself, to weed out news for you, to censor what goes into your head. Now, the irony, of course, is the mainstream media is actually responsible for the rise of this so-called fake news. They've been feeding fake news to us for years. One of the most brilliant moves that Donald Trump made in his presidential campaign was making the media part of the campaign. And the reason that the media and progressives, and again, I repeat myself, are so upset is because this year, for the first time, a large block of the American public refused to buy their spin. That's why they're upset. Oh, and speaking of fake news, Newsweek, 125,000 copies of that issue published and shipped pulled before too many of them got into circulation. Apparently only about 17 copies sold, which are probably going to be worth an awful lot of money in the years ahead. Um, but it just makes you think back to November 3rd of 1948 and uh, this famous shot of President Harry S. Truman holding up the Chicago Daily Tribune, which got it wrong. Again, fake news for years. Well, since the election, the government of Norway has announced it's cutting its donations to the Clinton Foundation. Now, the question that comes to mind is this. If the Clinton Foundation is just an innocent charity organization, in spite of the mountain of evidence from WikiLeaks to the contrary, why would it matter whether Hillary Clinton was the president of the United States or not? If it's all about the children and Haiti and helping the poor, that goes on. They will, the poor will always be with us, Jesus told us, whether Hillary Clinton is president or not. Now, of course, <laughs> that's a rhetorical question. You and I both know the answer to that question. Uh, Norway had kicked in about $5 million a year from 2007 to 2013. After she announced that she was running for president, the government of Norway bumped its contribution to $15 million in 2014 and $21 million bucks in 2015. Coincidence, I'm sure. And, oh, coincidentally, after she lost the election, they've decided to cut their contributions for 2017 by 87%. Coincidence. Contributions from all donors to the Clinton Foundation dropped by 37% in 2016 compared to the previous year, thanks to the evidence from WikiLeaks that the Clinton Foundation was actually a pay-to-play gateway for access to Bill Clinton and Hillary and the United States government. But just when you thought it was safe to get back in the water, Chelsea, Congress, 2018. A city in the home state of Vice President-elect Mike Pence is renaming holidays in order to be more inclusive. Now, we lived in Indiana. It's a pretty conservative state, except for Bloomington, which is the home of Indiana University, Sharon's alma mater. Um, the mayor there uh, has decreed that henceforth, Good Friday will be known as Spring Holiday. And Columbus Day will forevermore be called 
fall holiday. Mayor John Hamilton made this announcement in a memo sent out to city employees last week, last Friday. Quoting now, we are terrifically proud of our diverse workforce at the city. That diversity makes us stronger and more representative of the people we proudly serve. These updated names for two days of well-merited time off is another way we can demonstrate our commitment to inclusivity, end quote. By erasing history, we become stronger. Well, speaking as a January American, I find it offensive to those of us born in the post-New Year winter months that we are not being recognized and included in these new holidays, and I demand a new post-New Year winter holiday with requisite safe space. By the way, no plans for the cities of Columbus, Indiana, or Indian Village, Indiana, to change their names to be more inclusive, or for that matter, for the state of Indiana to change its name to Native American Iana to be more sensitive. We need a new name for the word holiday because it's based on Holy Day, and it's clear that there is nothing holy about our holidays anymore. Uh, holiday is now just a special code word for official paid day off for government bureaucrats. Researchers working at the Church of the Holy Sepulcher in Jerusalem reporting some unexplained phenomena connected to the tomb of Jesus. This is where he was laid, reportedly, after the crucifixion. Workers there removed the marble slab covering the tomb at the end of October. They're working on shoring up the tomb so that it won't collapse beneath the weight of the church above it. Since then, there have been reports of a sweet aroma coming from the tomb. Now, this is a phenomenon that's often reported in connection with apparitions of Mary or various saints. But uh, some researchers claim that measuring instruments have been affected by strange electromagnetic anomalies. As soon as they were placed on the stone on which it's believed Jesus' body was laid, instruments malfunction or stop working altogether. Now, some think this is just a hoax, but one of the heads of the construction, construction team said they thought the tomb was a lot deeper in the earth than it actually was, which indicates that the instruments they used to gauge the depth of the tomb were being affected by some strange electromagnetic disturbances. And finally, the desire for eternal life is very powerful. It's also misguided since attaining eternal life is simple. You just accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But still, the search continues for a fountain of youth, and researchers believe they've come up with one, which is really creepy. In a recent study, scientists rejuvenated old mice with the blood of human teenagers. This new study took blood samples from healthy 18-year-old American teens and injected the plasma from the blood into 12-month-old mice. Now, in mouse years, a 12-month-old mouse is about my age. They found that after three weeks of plasma injections, the new blood made the old mice act young again, running around in open spaces like the younger mice, the control population. They also found that memory power improved, which might not be of any help because, you know, my memory's not as good as it was when I was young, but I don't waste as much time running around in open spaces either. Well, the clinical trial has begun at Stanford to test a theory that the reversal of aging seems to have something to do with proteins in the plasma. That when we're young, there are proteins that rejuvenate tissue that as we age are replaced by proteins that cause inflammation. The researchers hope to have information from this study, uh, which involves 18 people diagnosed with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease by the end of the year. Now their goal, they say, if this proves their theory, is to synthesize, to manufacture synthetic proteins of the proteins that are needed to turn back the clock because there isn't enough natural young plasma, human plasma in the world, which is a shame just when we thought we'd found some use for human teenagers. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Well, the program note, tomorrow is Thanksgiving and we hope you have a blessed holiday with family. Time to reflect on the blessings that God has shared with us all. And we pray that it is a blessed time for you to share with the ones you love. And because of that, this will be our last update for the week. There will be no daily update on Thanksgiving Day or on Friday. Of course, no Sci Friday episode on Friday either, as we at Skywatch TV will be taking this time to spend the days with our loved ones. We thank you for watching and for your support. We pray 
We pray for blessings on you this holiday season. And we're still not ashamed of using that word. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. Many ancient prophets foresaw Abaddon rising from the underworld in this very age. satanic human sacrifice by CERN employees in front of the god Shiva was called parody. But all occult masters understand that symbolism was a powerful invitation for a doorway to be opened at CERN. The secret origins of CERN are nefarious to the core. Sergio Bertolucci the science director at CERN admits that they're trying to open a doorway to a parallel reality, and they hope that something, unknown unknowns, he calls them, will come through it. And CERN was built right over Apoliacom, where the ancients believed the doorway to Abaddon and the bottomless pit exists. Is the bottomless pit from Revelation chapter 9 about to open? The biggest and most secretive investigation ever is set to be published, disclosing what no report has done before in Abaddon Ascending. Technology today is being developed so that we can communicate with extra-dimensional entities. The ancient conspiracy at the center of CERN's most secretive mission. But how will God's people, the remnant, prevail over the principalities of darkness during the final showdown between heaven and hell? Though hell may have its directive, heaven has its imperative. Increasing evidence from around the globe of miracles healings, and prophetic visions indicate that God is already raising up an army of believers for the greatest awakening yet. Coming this December, internationally acclaimed best-selling authors and researchers Dr. Thomas Horn, author and researcher of quantum physics Josh Peck, college president Dr. Michael Lake, investigative researcher Reverend Donna Howell, and the host of Southwest Radio Ministries, Dr. Larry Spargimino. A research finale so huge and important it had to be published in a new three-book collection. Abaddon Ascending, the ancient conspiracy at the center of CERN's most secretive mission, the Shereef Imperative, empowering the remnant to overcome the gates of hell. He always has a plan. He's playing chess while the devil's playing checkers. Final Fire is the next great awakening right around the corner. There are signs all around the world right now that we are on the cusp of the next great spiritual awakening. There is revival breaking out now where there has never been the faith. This three book collection available December 6, 2016. For more details, log on to skywatchtv.com.